Futures trading involves substantial risk of loss and may not be suitable for all investors. Good morning. It's Thursday, April 4th, about 6 a.m. Central Time. Overnight, the precious metals are flat after yesterday's explosive session. ADP payroll jobs data came out at 184,000 jobs created with 148,000 expected. It briefly propped up the U.S. dollar index and also treasury yields, and it paused the rally on precious metals. Now, as the day went on, we saw rotations out of other asset classes and really momentum come back into the market and propel those precious metals higher at one point. Silver was holding well over a dollar, and it sustained that throughout the session, constantly adding to the bottom line as the day went on. Now, looking from the Fed's perspective, a stronger U.S. dollar is really in its best interest if it does want to fight inflation right now. It can help bring down energy prices. It can also help them regain control of inflation, which has seemed to run away here just recently. It'll make exports look more expected, expensive, and then also imports. Cheaper imports is really a plus. Now, Jerome Powell did speak at Stanford University yesterday, and he did indicate that it is in the best interest that they do not expect that it would be appropriate at this time to lower policy rate until they've got greater confidence that inflation is moving closer to that 2%. So what that means is, is that we went really from three interest rate cut expectations yesterday to two. You really want to keep an eye on a couple of things here. Again, you want to have that dollar index chart on your screen. You want to see 105 is your line in the sand. Don't even worry about it unless we start to turn back up and breach through there. And then you also want to look at the CME's Fed Watch tool, which will give you an indication of the number of interest rate cuts going forward. And really, that number had come down just a notch from three to two. It hasn't had much impact on the precious metals at the moment because remember, gold has really been running away and it's been central bank buying has really been the underlying driver of gold. And then also a lot of people do allocate gold as an asset bucket. I know we do on the Blue Line Capital Wealth side. People will have an allocation to gold and gold miners in that, but they don't necessarily have that allocation to the silver market. So silver ETFs have really been stagnant throughout the year. However, that was really until yesterday. So from the GLD perspective, we saw 78,000 ounces added to GLD. Remember that market's quite saturated right now, but the chasers came in and the momentum players have come back into the market. And silver added 2.8 8 million ounces yesterday. So a big jump up there on those ETF holdings there and what they need. And I've always argued when it came to silver, you really need three, four things. You need manufacturing activity to pick up. Remember silver, it is what it is. It's an industrial metal here. You also need those ETF inflows and then you do need China behind it. China seemed to stabilize. A lot of people are long China. They've been long China for about three months here looking for that kind of reopening, reignition, kind of putting that real estate market demise behind us and in President Xi Jinping coming back and really trying to reignite that economy there because remember silver is one of the asset classes that China consumes most and they are the number one consumer of copper. Now getting into these markets here really what I wanted to talk about was how to how to trade the unknown so when you hit all-time highs on markets or you feel like a market had gone away from you how do you trade that? I have a lot of active traders that don't care about what what the market is they just want to be in the action here. So when Cocoa Futures were breaking out, this is well over a year ago, we got involved with that market. They were wondering, how do you get involved with it? I think the first thing you really got to do is you got to define your levels if you're going to use futures because they're leveraged contracts. Remember, silver is a thousand ounces. That's $27,000 worth of silver at 27 bucks an ounce. So you have to come in and you have to say, okay, this bucket of my account, this amount of my account is my kind of mad money risk capital here. So you go with silver at $27. You look at the chart and you say, hey, the recent swing low has been about 24 and a half. So you got $3.50 there to kind of say, if it breaks, 2450 the party's probably over those momentum traders have probably left the scene they're probably chasing bitcoin or nasdaq or something else so you can go from $27 to that 2450 $3.50 that's your $3500 mad money so if you purchase that 
thousand ounces, that's where your stop would go. Now, if prices pull back, you look at where you would add to those positions. A lot of times I'll divide that by two and say, hey, about a dollar seventy-five of the 350 is where I would add that second contract at. And then below that 2450, that's where I would clean house, wipe the deck, and hey, we survive another day. We've got dry powder on the sidelines. And if you don't think that silver can't just do a rug pull, and I'm not saying I want it to or anything like that. Don't go that crazy on me. But it went from 2250. This was on about November 13th. And we came through and we got into the holiday weekend with Thanksgiving in 2023. And all of a sudden, prices took off. And where'd they go? They went to 2650. That's a $4 range higher. People thought this is it. It's going to 30. And the rug pull happened. And within about six, seven days, by December 14th, prices were back below $23. So these markets tend to move in cycles. You do get these moves where it's like cocoa and it goes up, you know, a thousand percent over the course of a year. So I do want silver to go to $50. So you get that second break back to where we're at. From the $27 down to $1.75 break, they'll suck the option premium out of the market. That's when you go longer duration. You go out to July, September, and you look at those inexpensive call options, $30, $35, $40 call options. You don't necessarily need to ride it up to those levels. You just want the market to reignite and take off again, and they'll pump the premium back in those call options, and then that's where uh, you get a lot of bang for your buck. So not necessarily a trading recommendation. It's more out a strategy of how to play the unknowns define your risk put your get your position on look at your points where you're going to add to the market remember you need to have a stop out point at some point and then look to add the icing on the cake with some longer term call options so a little bit longer video i just want to give it to you guys because i had a lot of call-ins yesterday you got any questions give me a call 312-858-7303 remember futures and option trading involves risk of loss may not be suitable to all investors good luck good trading